Thank you, Father. We all know your name. Lord, again and again, we stand upon this mountaintop to praise and adore your name. We declare that there's no one like you. We stand upon our faith this morning to say, Abba, there's none like you. Only you can make a way where there's none. Only you can bring honey out of the rock. And so we praise and adore you. We thank you for this divine opportunity to be in your presence. To fellowship together in spite of the odds we have today. Receive all the honor and all the glory. It belongs to you, Father. Oh, thank you, mighty Father. Hallelujah to your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Someone sent me a lovely story the other day of a young lady that was driving along with her father. They came upon a storm. And the young lady asked her father, what should I do? And they turned to her and said, keep driving. As they drove along, the young lady noticed that cars were pulling over and we're parking by the roadside. And she turned again to her father and asked her father again, what should I do? She asked her father. <laughs> and the father said one more time, keep driving. And as she drove along the path, she noticed that what they call the 18 wheelers were parking, big trucks and all kinds of cars were packing by the roadside. Worried, she turned to her father again. And this time she didn't ask her father, she just simply said to the father, I must pull over daddy. I must pull over. I can barely see ahead of me father. It is terrible. And everyone is pulling over. Everyone is pulling over. And the dad firmly said to her, don't give up, just keep driving. We don't know if it was fear of the father's word or if it is because the father was with her in the car. But she just found herself driving. She kept driving and driving. Now the storm was terrible. But she never stopped. She never stopped. She kept driving and driving. And a little while longer, she could then see a little bit more clearly than she did before. After a couple of miles, after a couple of miles, she was again on dry land. And the sun had come out. At that point, the father turned to her and said to her, Now, now, pretty, now, my little daughter. He said, Now you can pull over and step out. And she asked her father in confusion. She asked, He said, Why now, daddy? Why, why now? And the father said, Just pull over. And step out. He said, when you get out, look back. When you get out, when you step out, look back at all the people. All the people behind.
behind you that gave up and are still in the storm. But because you never gave up, your storm is over. Your storm is over because you never gave up. I came with God's word to encourage someone this morning. I came armed with the word of the Holy Ghost to say to someone this morning, keep moving in your faith. Keep your faith moving. Don't give up. No matter what the challenges are, no matter what the odds are, is it not the eloquence of David that we can consult by the Holy Spirit wherein David said, even though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I will not fear. He didn't say the valley wouldn't come. He didn't say the shadow of death wouldn't come. He said, even though, whether I walk through it or not, even though I walk through it, even though challenges come, even though persecutions come, even though infirmities come, even though diseases come, he said, I will, I won't be afraid. I will not fear. For you are my shepherd and I shall not be in anyone. I will not fear. I will not fear. You see, the children of Israel feared at one time. They saw Pharaoh coming and they were scared. They saw troubles coming and they were scared. But I want to say to you this morning, this time, the reason why God told us what would happen before it happens is to encourage and strengthen us. To encourage, to empower us with knowledge that the people, other people don't have. You see, other people, everything takes them by the storm. But when God says to you something like this will happen, challenges will come, storms will come, fire will come, rivers will come. He's not saying it to scare you. He's not saying it to scare us. He's saying it so that we could be armed with knowledge. We could be armed with understanding that these things will come to pass. Remember in the wilderness with Egypt, in the wilderness, the children of Israel, the Lord came one day and said to them, Tomorrow about this time, I will send manna from heaven. He was telling them to anticipate. He was telling them to expect because the expectations of the righteous will not be cut off. And God's word cannot fail. It is important that you stand on the authenticity of God's word because God's word can never fail. He told them, but in spite of having told them, the next day when they came out from their homes and saw manna all over the place, they ran to Moses and they said to Moses, what is this? What is this that we see outside? And Moses said, that is that, is that which the Lord spoke about yesterday. That is that which the Lord spoke about yesterday. That is that which the Lord spoke about yesterday. You see every virus, every pain, every disease, every abuse, every betrayal. I want to say to someone this morning that that is that which the Lord spoke about yesterday in his word. That they will come, but surely I will never leave you, not depart from you. They would come. Paul speaking in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I will, from verse 13, he said, we believe this. I believe it. So I said it. Believe God's word and say, in fact, at one point he said, we believed. We say what we believe. We say what we believe. God declares in that same Corinthians, he said, every detail works. He works to your advantage. Every detail works to our advantage to bring God's glory to to bring us glory, more and more grace, more and more people, more and more praise to the Father. Not because he has a hand in it, but because he's meant it for glory. Hear what Paul says in God's word. Let me read what God, Paul says in God's word. Same Corinthians again, chapter 4. Same Corinthians, 
chapter 4. We're reading from 4. Mata Ruselene. Ekahosaha. Verse 16. I read and hear. Amara Kohotehe. He says in the word. So we're not giving up. That Kelvin give up. He said, We're not giving up. How could we? Paul asked. How could we give up? Even though on the outside, it often looks like things are falling apart on us. It looks like things are falling apart on us. On the inside, where God is making a new life. Not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. This hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times that is ahead of you. The lavish celebrations prepared for us. There's far more here than meets the eye. These things we see now are here today. These challenges you see here now are here today. These obstacles you see today are here today. These betrayals that you've heard are here today. Whether it be theft, whether it be armed robbery, whether it be rape, whether it be kidnapping, they are here today. They are come on to man. He says, boss, they are gone tomorrow. But the things we cannot see now will last forever. The things we cannot see, faith is to call the things that are not as though they were. The things you cannot see. The things that we cannot see. He said they are eternal. They are forever. What do you see of yourself? Jesus came to guarantee us that as the Father was with him, because he is the Father, that he will be with us till the end. Jesus suffered persecution. He suffered being misunderstood. He suffered being betrayed. He saw people sick. He saw people abandoned. He saw people miserable. He saw people hungry. But he said, I will never, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. In this time, what we need to do is put ourselves together and begin to ask God for strategies and concepts. Remember the story. Remember the story of Jacob, where he went to his in-law's place he went to Laban's place and every time Laban would change the agreement every time he would tell him if if the lambs are speckled if they had dots on them then I'll take those ones and you take those ones that are unblemished but if they become blemished at one point you take the one that are speckled because he will judge which number is greater. But each time Jacob will do something. I don't know who taught him. The Bible didn't say the Lord said to him. But he must have come from God. God gave him a concept on how to beat the trickiness, the defrauding nature of Laban. Hear me in this time. You must posture yourself to such an extent with a great conviction that it is possible that this challenge will not be over. It is possible that mankind may have to live with the virus all the days of their life. Cancer has not gone away from the earth. You see, Ebola has not gone away. Hey, HIV and AIDS have not gone away. They are still here amongst mankind. This virus might remain. It might be here, but it mustn't tie you to your house. It mustn't tie your hands to be folded. That you stop dreaming. That you stop anticipating. That you stop hoping. You must believe completely that he who has called you is able to bring the things that he has spoken to you about your life to you. Not to another man, but to you. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. You are much more than a conqueror. You must not stop yourself from stepping out into the unknown knowing with a great heart that great is he who has called me 
For our God is able, our God is strong, our God is mighty, our God is awesome, our God is powerful, and no God like our God. In fact, there is no other God on the face of this earth greater than our God. There is no other God beside our God whose name is Yeshua, called amongst men as Jesus. Without posture. New strategies because things have changed. New concepts because things have changed. You didn't change it. Time and chance happen to all things. And the time has come for you to step out from your house to a newness that has not been discovered before. Strategies and concepts on how to do business and on how to invest. Areas that are known to men. Areas that are not common to men. And if they be common areas that even though they are common, you will profit much more than the others. Why? Because the anointing is with you. The anointing, the Holy Ghost is with you. He says, if that same spirit that rose Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body, then he will reactivate, revitalize even your mortal body. It means new ideas, new concepts, new ideas, new concepts, a new place in destiny. Your destiny will not be cut short. Your life will not be cut short on the face of the earth. Because our God is the God of power. Remember this. Christ in us is the hope of glory. It means that Christ, glory hopes that Christ will be in us. Because when Christ is in you, glory begins to manifest. It's not to the swift that the race belongs to. It's those, those who by the grace of God keep moving. Your grace is the move of God's spirit in your life. Matul kipa hausan na rakahu talama. E makuri ama hu telema. I have a prophecy for someone. Your days have just started. Your miracles have started in the Lord. Your days have started. Your miracles are upon you. Remember this and remember always that no weapon fashioned against you will ever prosper. Remember this. That greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I want you to, wherever you are now, rise to your faith. Raise your hands hey, to the heavens and begin to worship him. Begin to speak to him. Martin Luther King Jr. said, Nothing could be more tragic than for men to live in this revolutionary times and fail to achieve the new attitudes and the new mental outlook that new situations demand. There's a new mental attitude that you need to acquire now. A new mental disposition that you need to acquire now. It comes from God Almighty. Just ask the Lord, Lord, bequeath me with new attitude, new concept, new ideas in this season, in these challenging times that we are confronted with. Lord, bless me. Put your hand on your head. There's a move of God's spirit. Put your hands on your head and begin to speak to the Lord now. If you speak in tongue, this is the hour to begin to speak in tongue and bless the name of the Lord. If you have no father, know that God is your father. If you have no husband, know that God is your husband. He is the father of the fatherless. Hey, the husband of the widow. If you have no friend, he's the friend that sticks closer than a brother. It means that what a brother cannot do, this our God who is awesome can do all of it. Just raise your hands and worship the Lord. I want to tell you that you're loved by God. You're loved by Jesus. That's why the scripture, which can never be broken, says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish. My brother, my sister, you will not perish in the name of Jesus. No weapon will cause you to perish. Your business will not perish. Your investments will not perish. Your children will not perish. Your grandchildren will not perish. Nothing that belongs to you will perish in the name of Jesus. I'm loved by him. I'm loved by him. Not by a man. By, by the Lord. Raise your hands in worship and just celebrate Jesus. Mahe kehu sehe, arima kuhu te maha.
Tell him, I know you love me, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We won't give up. That scripture says, we would never give up. Never, ever give up. For greater is he that is in us. We are not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside, it often looks like things are falling apart for us. But on the inside where God is making a new life, no day goes by without his unfolding grace. These hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good things and good times. The lavish celebration. I speak over you that there's a lavish celebration that is coming upon your life in the name of Jesus. He said these hard times are small potatoes compared to the good times. Good times are upon you. It doesn't look like it. It doesn't smell like it. But good times are upon you in the name of Jesus. Before, let me share this. God is not like a mechanic, I often say. Some mechanics, when you give them your cars to fix, when they see you coming, they run towards your car as though they are working. No, God doesn't need to pretend. He doesn't need to pretend. When he says it's fixed, it's fixed. When he says it's yellow, it's yellow, even if it be black. That's the awesome God that we serve. So celebrate Jesus. Celebrate the master. Give him praise and worship. Tell him how awesome he is. Tell your neighbor, come and see what the Lord has done for me. Sometimes they would come and not see a thing, but you see it before they see it. That's the God you serve. Come on now, let's worship him with our song. Just as I am, you welcome me. Mm. With open arms, how can this be? With open arms, how can this be? As I am, you, you welcome me. My feet is undone. My back for this father. <laughs> I leave it behind and run to my father. Hey! Cause there is no disappointment in your eyes, God. There is no shame, there is only pride. Cause I am loved. Father, I'm loved by you. There's no disappointment in your eyes. There is no distance in your embrace. No distance in your embrace. Over and over oh. again. The Holy Spirit wrote that song to a man. Can you beat the words of that song? I am loved. Father, I'm loved by you. So unreserved, your heart for me. In all that, let your spirit lead me, Father. Thank you, mighty Father. We rejoice and celebrate and give you all adoration and praise. Praiseworthy are you, Father. I pray for you now and I prophesy over you. You are the head and not the last, above and not beneath. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will go off even in this season. You will step out from your house. You will carry gifts from you into the world and you'll be confronted by wealth and favor. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are super favored by the Holy Spirit. You're favored and separated for goodness and greatness by God. Everything you touch will prosper. Every place you step into will flourish. Not by power or by might, but by the Spirit of the living God. I command the earth to yield increase to your life. I speak to the heavens to drop it dews of blessings and favor upon your life. Go and conquer. Multiply on the face of the earth. Take dominion and reign 
and subdue all things. For you're the king's kid. You are a lion. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Prosper. Delight in God. For the Lord is your strength. The Lord is your help. The Lord nourishes you. The Lord is your stand. The Lord is your anchor. The Lord is your sustainer. That's who you are. And you will remain so in the name of Jesus. Now speak to the Lord and say, Holy Spirit, lead me. Father, lead me. Let your spirit lead me. We worship and adore you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Celebrate the Lord all over the place. In Jesus' name. To satisfy my thirst, to love me at my worst. And even when I don't remember, you remind me of my worth. I don't trust my will, trading in my faults. I lay down everything, cause you were all that I want. I've landed on my knees, this is the cup you have. yourself I was born to be different just put your hand on your chest and declare I was born to be different I was born not to be conformed to this world I was born to excel I was born to be favored all things are working together for my good I am not normal abnormality is my nature I am a king. I'm separated for great deeds upon the face of the earth. My brothers and my sisters, smile and shout. The Lord is with you. He's also upon you to achieve greatness on the face of this earth. Your life and your days will not be cut short by anything on the face of this earth. Whether they come from above or beneath, you will stand strong. For the grace of God is in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. You're blessed. Go and conquer in this way. You are anointed to excel. Go and achieve your success. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.
It's all because of you. It's all because of you, Jesus. Strong and healthy today, Lord. It's all because of you. It's all because of you, Lord. It's all because of you. celebrations are with us. Oh my God. Oh my God. There is celebration in the air. There is victory in the air. All things are working together for your good. You are at the top. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of our service. Don't forget, next Sunday, same time. As a matter of fact, you can also join the radio. If you cannot come on data or on the Facebook or any of the social media platforms, you can join the terrestrial streaming on 593.1, 1030, where the word of God will come to you powerfully in the name of Jesus. If you want to give a donation or a seed or tithe or whatever it is that the Lord lays on your heart to be a part of this great ministry, the account details are right there on your screen. Thank you for being a part of us. Thank you for being a part of the service. I'm certain that you are blessed. Don't forget, lavish celebrations awaits you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you.